Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm in the F-35, a freeware F-35 by Michael on the forums. And it's, I think, the most downloaded military aircraft uh, in the download section. And it looks like this. So, very spiffy. I hope the flaps are, like, automated because um, they sure aren't responding to my flap lever right now. <laughs> um, so, yep. Yeah. And I think I'll turn down the volume on it. I think it's probably a little bit too loud right there. So I'm doing that. And then I'm going to continue with the Apollo 13 audio where we left off. Okay, There's talking about procedures. One, eight, and one, here we go. That's correct. And we're going to also put AC inverter one, AC bus two. Well, let's hold off on the afterburner. We probably don't need that to take off. We're not doing a short takeoff, obviously. I wonder if it has like auto trimming or something. Okay, could you repeat that please? Okay, on panel five. It sure Sergeant holds Rick a certain Rick angle Rick much more CS stably than your average plane. Oh wow, signal. how slow is it going? Come on, let's just speed up a bit. Try and trim, trimming, 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 trimming. It doesn't seem to respond to my trimming very much. That's correct. And circuit breaker. Caution and warning. Main A closed. Uh, I really need to go faster and see if those flaps unflap. Oh, well, that's going to be some kind of problem. Seems like they do unflap. So that's automated. And we're picking up speed now. That's correct. On panel four. Telecom group one. DC one. Hopefully it can travel at Mach whatever efficiently. I think Mach 1.6. Whoa, whoa, suddenly decided to go down. Okay. Okay. 
Van Normal transponder primary. That's correct. We want to take power S C E to normal. Power S C E to normal. All right, and power P M P to normal. Power P M P to normal. That's correct. And up telemetry command reset to reset and then normal. Okay, we've got fluffy clouds today. Okay, well, it seems to be responding to my trim a little bit better now. I guess after the flaps are up, maybe. Leading edge slats are still doing something. That's correct. And configure for calm at this speed, which is interesting. Well, I'm gonna hit the afterburners and we'll see how it does. Hopefully, it can super cruise and everything. So, yep, here we go. We're actually going slower, wait. That doesn't seem right. Where's that awesome thrust that we're supposed to get from afterburners? It's not even consuming fuel that fast. Hmm. I think my afterburner is sort of busted. Those slats should not be down, I don't think. Burner, yeah, well, it says burner there. Okay, well, let's flatten out. We'll stay in here until we break Mach, which we had better be able to do. CMC power up for the CSM GNC checklist. G2 2. That's where we are. That's correct. Whoa, 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 whoa. Perform the EMS check. Oh, okay. Well, Step maybe diving will help. On the entry book, page 1 4. I know it's uh, all a white region on the dial. Maybe that's why the slots are still active. I don't know. Okay, perform the EMS check for step 32. For the entry is our A range up there in the upper left? That's correct. In that case, that's good. Okay, now the ground is going to give you a P27 update at EI minus oh, 2. Oh, the speed just went down five. suddenly. That's, huh. uh, that's a time that uh, you need to be configured to uh, accept up telemetry. And uh, what they're going to give you on a P27 update will be uh, a clock increment, a state vector, 
Or is I'll RA... That seems 66. more like the Mach number. They'll give you two rest mats. There'll be an actual and a preferred and the entry and the target number. Now, if you'd like to copy those... No, so the Mach number down is more. down there, and that's point nine nine three. We haven't broken no, Mach yet. So that is they range up in the upper six. left. There's Mach. Well, that's well, it's saying point one one. I don't know. Okay, or, uh, we'll do yep, yes, no can. idea. That shouldn't be point one one. That should be one point one. not very much. How about, uh, IMU power up? According to no, I don't want to go up that much. Yeah. It says point one one, but I think it means one point one. Okay, perform IMU power-up for GNC checklist page 2-1. That's correct. And while you're there, okay, you do very the nice, power-up. I mean, I'll have to get used to it. And of course, on flights where I get to use the autopilot, that'll be nice. I hope it's right about the range, because we've used a lot of fuel already. Seems to so be leveling out on the range estimate. And on panel 229. Circuit breaker timers. The afterburner consumption closed. doesn't seem to have... I mean, the fuel consumption doesn't seem to have changed very much as we've climbed. That's interesting. Okay, panel 229. CB timer. Main A closed. That's correct. The next thing you'll do will be to set the mission timer. All right, well, let's try outside now. What we've done is to only turn on the uh, mission timer on the MDC. And you probably have to wait here until they get through with the uplink so you can have the computer. Still over Utah. Okay, set it from the, from the CMC, huh? That's firm. Okay, now we're getting ready to start the alignment sequence. Oh, okay, the leading edge and, uh, bits have... Uh, the, uh, Got into line, so all right. Trim is super sensitive. Accelerating now, but that's because we're going down.
to the, uh, the entry rest map. Let's see, it says 1,300 nautical we'll miles, but it's ticking down pretty fast. A normal P -52 well, I guess that's because we're decelerating so as we go up. We're gonna use. Uh, if, you, if you think you have a handle on that, I'll go ahead and read you the steps. Okay, Again, the total flight is 859. Uh, so to, uh, we should be good of, uh, if it's telling the truth. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'm going to do a P-52, is that right? Even though we're uh, running the afterburners the whole way. And we're not going as fast as I was intending. Uh, the, the first thing we're going to do is to course uh, the platform and Mach get one point three nine, I think. I mean, if I'm reading that right, my 1.4 now. CMC. We'll then go and do okay, a P-52, option four. Um, correction, option one. Okay, that's after the lamp gets established at the attitude. Jim says, I'm here at the moon, uh, viewing attitude. I do a uh, run 41 down 20 to the set of angles that you're going to give me in the pad. That's correct. And then I enter the P-52. Uh, and then I enter the P-52. Uh, uh, and then I enter the P-52. I believe that's uh, Green so River down two. there. Yeah, that's an option one. The only reason you have the other rest man inside the computer in order to set the rest map flag, you need some uh, relative orientation. Okay, I see. I do P-52, option one, and uh, uh, when do I set the rest map flag to drift flag? Okay, that'll be before entering P-52. I will give you this procedure in detail. Okay, all right, let's, let's go at it. Maybe uh, I'll uh, it'll all fall out if you have any questions. Go ahead. Okay, I'm ready to start meeting again. We start with a verb 41 down 20. Well, I'll just try and keep it mostly like this and we'll see how it goes. Uh, maybe a trim down there. It's going up a bit. Okay, when the lamp is at the moon viewing attitude, I do a verb 41, 41 down 20 enter. That's right, and you'll put in the attitudes that you'll get from one of the pads, and this will be for the course align angles when the lamp is at the moon viewing attitude. And then when uh, they're all squared away, they tell you they've got the right attitude. Let me see how it does and when I take off the afterburner. It's still accelerating. Well, I mean, it's going down, but... Hmm. We're basically, I, I wonder if we can super cruise. We're going down right now, so we're not quite there yet. But. That's correct. Now we're going to set the refs mat and drift flags according to the GNC checklist. Page G7-1. Even though I've turned off the afterburner, range calculation hasn't gone up. It's still ticking down. Interesting. Well, the speed is going down precipitously now, even though we are going down. Now, verb 37, enter, 52, enter, option Okay, one. well, afterburner it is. And that actually increases the range? I don't know. Alright, whatever. It's like the range calculation isn't even taking into consideration our fuel consumption. Or maybe it's anticipating the eventual okay, speed that we'll get to without afterburner, but that's an interesting okay, trick. Now when it gets back to the marker we want to take a mark on the moon. Okay, mark on the moon uh, with the crosshairs in the center, is that right? So that's perfect. Okay, well that's complete. The lamp will maneuver to the sun moving angle or attitude. I mean, we've already used half of our fuel. And, when they get there, and we're still not of Utah, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if uh, 
I'm not sure right offhand what well, we the don't need to go up that size high. of the moon is, Jack. If you can get it in the sextant, that's the best thing to do. But you may have to go into the telescope in order to define the center. Either one's acceptable. I mean, according to fuel flow number there, is that gallons per hour or pounds per hour? I think that says gallons per hour. Well, in that case, that's pretty darn quick, isn't it? Okay, you ready to press on? I'm ready. Okay, I just reminded, uh, we owe somebody a bat B voltage. <laughs> they always owe somebody okay, a voltage. Alright, thank you. And, uh, this left is in B-52, uh, with two marks, and we'll go ahead and torque the now 93s. Yeah. Okay, we're now in Colorado. I think I'm gonna have to settle for okay, lower speeds. Yeah, I don't know about its range calculation. I don't trust it. Unless it's in like kilometers instead of nautical miles or something. Now we're up to EI minus one plus thirty. Or it could be taking this gallons per hour and pretending it's pounds per hour and trying to calculate like that. I don't know. But no, it doesn't seem to be right now. We're below the speed of sound now. Well, we had a bit of fun, briefly. Okay, <laughs> close out hatch installation at EI minus 130. That's right, Jack. And we're going to close the LEM hatch. And we'll make the dump valve in the LEM hatch closed. 
Oh, no, that's probably too much range on that map. map hatch, right? That's correct. Okay, this is a change from what we had understood previously. That's correct. Uh, personally, I'm happy to see it, but that's, uh, that's good. Okay. That's whoa. one vote on your whoa, side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and do the, uh, use the decal to perform the uh, hatch installation. We'll nope, we've got some leading edge slats again. Uh, that's not good. That just causes more drag. Even some of the flaps. too sure what to do about it. Okay, Ken, uh, one thing I think that, uh, I don't know whether anybody, the decal don't take into account the fact that we still have... The I mean, the fuel consumption uh, seems low right now. Point in time could they be despite the fact that, I mean, the fuel consumption on my afterburner do not seem particularly well coupled, even at a given altitude. Seems like the fuel consumption is more tied to our velocity than anything. Yeah, that's right. That does what. Uh, uh, John Aaron just saying that uh, they may be hot. He's checking on that. So how about holding the decision on that? Let me come back to you. Okay. Well, I'll take it back. It's getting up there now. Okay, and uh, let me tell you what we're going to do since we told you a different story this afternoon on this tunnel. Uh, we're actually going to vent the tunnel down so we end up with about uh, one and a half to two PSI absolute in the tunnel. And this will give us a delta P of three. So uh, we'll do our hatch integrity check at the same time we're venting the tunnel down. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now let me give you some, uh, some plumbing switches here. Let's we may not get tunnel. all the way to Dallas if we don't. We'll just work around that. I'm not sure about the fuel consumption on this. Alright, take the main regs to open. Once again says RA-1000, well, I don't know, maybe that's a different RA altogether, but it's right next to the true airspeed and ground speed, so. Okay, water and glycol tank pressure, and relief valve to both. That's correct. And emergency cabin pressure valve to both. and the suit demand regs to both. I mean, we're ticking down at about 10 pounds per second. That doesn't leave us with a whole lot. That's like 10 minutes worth. Suit demand regs to both. That's correct. Okay, now we're going to panel And if it's five. 10 minutes worth, that's not Circuit enough to breaker. get 1,200 nautical miles. ECS, so. transducers, pressure group, one and two, main A and main B. That's four circuit breakers closed. So I don't know what it's talking about. <laughs> ECS transducer group one and two, main A and main B, four to close. That's correct. Okay now, circuit breaker, ECS transducers temperature, main A and main B. That's two of them.
DPI minus one plus 20. I think we're gonna have a change to our flight plan so we're probably not gonna end up in Dallas on this one and then we'll see where we can land I'm trying to aim for Amarillo right now not too sure we'll make that either Fortunately, there's tons of little airfields all over the place. Well, at this point, I'm not going to care about going fast anymore. I mean, sometimes that RA in the corner is somewhat similar to the Mach number. I mean, right now it's very similar. Sometimes it isn't, though. But, I mean, it, it's close to the Mach number now. Close enough that I think it is the Mach number. But then sometimes it isn't. The auto flap is doing its auto flap thing. If I don't have afterburner on, it seems to require auto flap, but I don't like the auto flap because it adds drag that we really don't need. We, we don't need extra lift at 240 knots. Hopefully it's not a required thing. Uh, I don't know how to turn that off. Okay, that's, that's correct, Jack. Okay, uh, at EI minus one hour, we're going to be doing the uh, LAM jettison. So uh, just prior to that, we want to do a P-47. Yep. Nope. Pitch up there. Okay, say so at about uh, uh, one minute prior to LAM jettison. Yeah, just something that's come through for you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. See, I think it's the flaps right, that yeah, cause these pitch that, downs. Uh, I mean, because they're adjusting and then that changes how a pitch reacts. Okay, 
right. The next thing is uh, CSM Lem final set. Two of them, Otto. A reminder that Pooh is program 00, which is the idle program for the computer. starts going down like that because it retracted those flaps and hasn't quite fully retracted the slot yet say right okay, now the okay. yeah that's, that's the mock good. number only one what RA is supposed to say okay, if why it we'll says uh, RA and why that MS, number is sometimes different from on, the uh, number on the MFD interesting We are now over New Mexico. Okay, Just yeah, crossed over. Okay, now we're going to perform uh, uh, what we call the moon check. Uh, rather than go into detail, if you already know what we're doing, uh, just say so. Uh, otherwise, I'll describe the uh, use of the moon attitude set. Maybe you 
Okay, Jack, uh, you remember everybody in the past has commented on uh, seeing Moonset uh, just a couple of minutes prior to EI. And your horizon will probably be dark at the time you get there. You have an early morning entry, and coming in from the west, you'll still be looking at a dark horizon. So, uh, just as a backup technique, just like you would uh, track the horizon, we're going to give you an attitude which will be on the pad so that you can uh, look directly at the moon. This is an inertial attitude that uh, won't be changing. And uh, if you'll put the 36 degree window line on the moon, and then just sit there and watch it, and uh, just prior to EI, the Earth will come up in a colon, and you'll then have a good horizon check. And I have some time, so I'll give you that later. And if you just look at this thing, uh, at that point you can set the GDC or whatever you desire, and you'll have a known attitude reference. It's just like a horizon check. Okay, uh, I maneuver to the moon check attitude, at which time I put the 36 window line uh, on the moon, and just uh, prior to the EI, the Earth will occult the moon. That's correct. That corresponds to the same uh, inertial attitude that you'd have uh, on the back of your entry card, where it shows the uh, horizon attitude uh, several minutes prior to EI. It's the same thing. Yeah, that's that one at 17 minutes prior, okay. Okay, we're just getting it in a little closer. Okay, the next item on the okay. check... Yeah, pretty sure I'm going to land at Amarillo EI now. 40. We're going to panel 7, and it's BMAG number 2 power to warm up. New Mexico looking good though. This is Apollo Control at 127 hours 31 minutes. We've completed the shift handover in Mission Control. A change of shift briefing is scheduled to begin in about 15 minutes at uh, 9 p.m. in the main news center auditorium uh, in Building One. Apollo Control System wastewater urine duct heater. Two of them closed. Okay, and we want to 
want to activate the primary evaporator. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right now, I think we have the radiator to pull the bypass. Ah, uh, sometimes this thing. started out that way, and uh, we turned the glycol pumps on. And we're I'm sure for, I mean, it's just designed and, uh, for autopilot. The, uh, command module being a heat sink, it's uh, pretty cold, so it uh, and, uh, looks like this is good enough. You got some relatively low heat okay. loads, and we'll keep watching the temps, and if we need it, well, we'll start the evaporator early. Okay, that sounds good. Do you believe it's cold in there? Yes, we, we used to call the command module the bedroom and it's now the refrigerator. Okay, <laughs> just don't call it the refrigerator. Okay, at about uh, EI minus 19, we get back no to comments. the standard entry checklist on page 2 2 where it starts with P61. Taking a look at uh, whereabouts two Kamkari's there. That's right, All right. The current rate. That's what they predict, and uh, you can go ahead and drink the water. No sweat. Dal Hart. Okay, we're fine. And yeah. I've got the entry checklist down, and I'm ready to copy. Just give me the page. Oh, okay. Jack, you're starting to sound like an LMP. <laughs> Lunar module pilot. Line 
Oh, there's a definite border in the photo scenery there, but that is not a state border. Left again. Check right there where we are. Uh, the bottom line now reads EMS mode to standby. We're just above that. I'd like to remind you to put a remark. Do not initialize the range to go. Uh, this is because you're going to come into the EMS entry check. You're going to run through all these things, and we're going to remove power from the EMS. And uh, just didn't want you to get ahead of yourself and initialize the entry parameters because you'll lose them when we power up. Okay. And uh, after we go EMS mode to standby, I'd like for you to add circuit breaker EMS to to open. Certainly running out of fuel and, uh, here. About uh, a third of the way down, it shows uh, panel 275, CB main A, bat C. Cold. And there's we'll Amarillo. That line, the next two lines. So we're going to strike out uh, main A, bat C close. Whoa, well, it's going up again. Close. Stop that. Stop, stop, stop B. that. Gosh, can't even check the map. Okay, I'm back. Anyway, it looks like about 75 miles out. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I hesitate to think how this is gonna glide down. If it extends its flaps and all, it's gonna lose speed very quickly. Okay, 
squad, Charlie. Main B, open. Well, obviously if I wanted to go from Salt Lake City to Dallas, I probably would not have wanted to use the afterburner with this. That's correct. And, and it would have taken a lot longer too. That's two of them. Open. So I'll reassess the rest of the flight schedule. We will end up flying to Dallas, but I think we'll skip one of the other stops. And I'll take the liberty of flying one of my favorite planes for longer as a result. So we are over Texas now. And uh, let's go back to page 1-6, line 41. Let's put in a time, minus 4, 40. Minus 4, 40. That's correct. On page 2-1. Landscape doesn't look all that great, huh? Uh, I don't know what these smudges are. Are they supposed to be green? Are they supposed to be oil related? I don't know. out the first two lines on 2-2. Now we're right below that it says separation checklist. So we're going to just delete that whole thing that's included in the notes I gave you. Okay. We put it in the notation. All right. Line number seven. It says maneuver to horizon check attitude. We're going to call this the moon check attitude. And this is one we discussed, Jack. The angle of 265 is uh, not correct. I'll have one of those for you first thing in the morning. Okay. Okay, and uh, at the bottom of the page, step number one. That'll be at uh, EI minus 19 minutes. And we're off and running uh, through a normal sequence of events. Okay, that sounds good. 
Uh, Ken, I guess uh, you've run this thing. Uh, is it a comfortable timeline? Any uh, areas where you had problems with? Uh, Jack, it is very comfortable. Uh, we've run wow. it uh, several times now. Trim is just and, very uh, coarse uh, right it's now. It's being run right now again. And uh, we've run it both here in Houston and at the Cape. Uh, the only place where you might find that you need to stay ahead of things is during a platform alignment period when you're getting ready to close out the limb. And then once you get into the command module and jettison the limb, uh, you're back on a, a very comfortable time. And uh, of course, we'll be watching you. Anything we can do, uh, like keeping track of time for you, we'll uh, remind you of that as we go along. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good, Ken. Okay, uh, let me uh, emphasize, Jack, that uh, two and a half hours is the earliest time we can start in on that power-up stuff. Everything else you, you can do the way you normally would, where you get as far ahead of the game as you can. But the uh, two and a half hour time is based on saving command module consumables. And if you do that, while well, we're fat, we've got uh, plenty of time to give you some uh, fans on the water even. 20 so nautical that, miles out. That's the one point you don't want to start early on. I do have a couple more lines to uh, run through on the entry checklist and uh, two pages in the GNC, and I think that'll clean us up. Uh, okay, Ken, in the GNC checklist now? Well, let me let me finish a couple things in the entry book. You still got that? Yes, go ahead. Okay, on, uh, these are just cleanup items, oh, Jack. On oh. page 2-3, it uh, lists uh, how you separate from the CMSM set and all that, so uh, obviously from uh, step 5 and 43 minutes down, that's all deleted. And that gets deleted uh, all the way over on page 2-4 up to the line where it says 50 minutes. And at that point, uh, we pick back up and everything from 50 minutes down is valid. I think I see an airport there. Okay, delete item five down to the point where it says minus 50 minutes. That's correct, Jack. Okay, on page 2-5, uh, the top line, we have horizon check, that's the now the moon set check, and the time is approximately 57.37, and that's minus 2.23. that's listed in the book there, 177. That's really the horizon time in two minutes we'll have you. You can look that on the, up on the back of your entry cue card, and I'll look that number up again for you tonight. Okay. Okay, uh, another thing is to remember... Well, the city of Amarillo. Wasn't really uh, intending to, stopping by, uh, to stop by here, but here we are. Uh, once we've lost calm, we'll let's get into the cockpit. The SCE power off. We've got some warnings. And we just want to do that uh, master caution. Call, comes up around EI. Fuel Anytime quantity. That, well, yeah, and, obviously. Uh, secure the PMP and the SE power. Okay, when COM is brought, SCE power off. Power off. That's correct, Jack, and that completes the entry checklist. Uh, let's look at the GNC book. Seems to do better at lower altitudes than I thought it would. Okay, ready let's to take copy. a look. Speed okay, brakes? I think it's Dash. just uh, rudder speed brakes. Okay. Really mild speed brakes. Interesting. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Jack. Uh, the second line under IMU power up 
It says FDAI power to both, and we're going to make that a one. The reason we're doing that is, again, to conserve power. There's no reason to drive the second FDAI before we get some information to put on it. Okay. FDAI power to one. All right, that's correct. On page 2-2. Okay, under CMC power up, a line or step two says flashing 3700, enter. Now, the time we're going to use this, Jack, is going to be when you've just brought the computer up, and it has a state vector in it that's uh, way back uh, many, many hours ago. So we want to do a verb 96 enter to stop the integration, to keep it from just sit there ambling along. And when the ground gives you a new state vector Y, then we can... Uh, go through poo and we'll be back in business. Okay, uh, you want me to go to, uh, room 37 enter zero zero uh, it's certainly enter, a different sort of plane. When you come up, uh, I guess you're gonna, once you get the CMC powered up, you're probably gonna be going, you're gonna come up in a flashing, uh, 37. And if you'll just do a verb 96 enter right there, that'll take care of it. Okay. All right. And the last one I have for you is on page 2-4. Okay. And landing gear down. Okay, go ahead. Okay, under the All SCS right. power up. The first line says auto RCS select 16 to off. Okay, you can just uh, delete that part. On the fifth line, it says circuit breaker SCS logic power. That's really logic bus, four of them, to close. The delta V CG is not important since we're not burning the engine. The signal conditioner driver bias power lists two to AC1. We're gonna make that just one of them. Make it signal condition driver bias power one to AC1. The BMAG power, which is the third line from the bottom, says BMAG power two on. We're gonna make that just one. We'll bring up number one. And we'll make FDAI power number one. And the last line, auto RCS select 16, enable. You can strike that off. And replace it with BMAG mode, three of them, to rate one. You want to try reading that back? Auto RCS select 16 off. Change CB logic power to logic bus power. Uh, CB SCS logic bus 4 to close. Delete Dela V C G. Coming down here. Driver bias power 1. AC 1. Uh, BMAG power 1. This is handling all right now. It's the number 1 BMAG. When it counts. FDA power to 1. BMAG mode 3 to rate 1. Deleting the auto RCS select 16 to enable. Whoa! Okay, I was on my Correct. hind legs. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this, this uh, uh, my nose wheel steering uh, ain't yes, great sir, right uh, now. Let's see. Uh, well, just like, let me check on this hatch integrity check. Maybe I can tell you something about that. Oh, why is it going fast from stop? Power question about the umbilical. See, uh, Umbilicals uh, will be unpowered according to the LEM procedures. So if you'd like to disconnect them, you can. Okay, I think well, it we accelerates will. a bit All too right, well sir. with even idle throttle. At least down here. Okay, okay yeah, so definitely some, some stuff second. left to learn about this plane. Uh, Jack, uh, would you get the okay. battery charger off, please? And uh, we'll we are at Amarillo. I will later. proceed to redo some of my further plans. Okay, uh, in 
and yep right. I'll okay, probably be changing uh, which well okay, the next uh, plane will probably be a Texan which seems appropriate because we're in Texas uh, negative, uh, so wait, we'll probably stick to that uh, but we'll be headed to Dallas we'll instead of going from Dallas to somewhere else uh, so anyway with us here in Amarillo I'm gonna say thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.